All right, I'm gonna show you today what to look for when you're buying a fixer upper. Now, when you're buying a fixer upper, you can really have some great success, get a lot of equity and do really well financially for yourself and setting yourself up in the future. You can also screw yourself and cost you, you can make mistakes and that it will cost you tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars very easily. So I'm out here at a property in uh, Renton. Um, and one of the first things you want to look for is the roof. You can see with this house that the roof, although it's not on fire, it's not a new roof. It's an old roof. So that's, that's going to need some work. Uh, and you can see a few things to look for is roof ventilation. For example, you can see along the soffits here, there are no vents, no vents, no vents, okay? So while there may be vents at the end of the house, which you can see here, that allows air to flow through, you, you basically end up with these dead zones, okay? Where there's a lot of stagnant air that is not moving. This is a problem because you can get organic growth. I'm not gonna say mold, but I'm not qualified to say if it's mold or not, but you can get that in um, attics that are not um, properly ventilated. So you wanna look at the ventilation because if it's not properly ventilated and it has gotten water in there and it's just mold, warm, hot, stinky. Did I just say that M word? I didn't mean to. Um, another thing to look at, siding. This is a 1940s house. This is old aluminum siding. They don't do this anymore. Aluminum's too expensive and it's not an ideal building material. However, this is not siding that you need to replace. It's in good shape. You can just paint it. So if you don't wanna blow your budget and do a lot of work by, or spend a lot of money by replacing all the siding, you can inspect it, take a look at it, see how it is. Um, and you can see here, it matches on the garage. The colors, you know, <laughs> very eastery and interesting but uh that is something that you can do that would need um you could just paint it um and get by with that for a while because it is in good shape so uh, another thing you want to look at is below the house crawl space that kind of thing so um you can see here um we've got a whoa, you can see here we've got a cellar um, cellars underneath the house right here. There's a little ladder way to get down there. So you want to be careful doing that. I should, probably should bring a light, um, but I don't have one um, in my hand. So we'll just go ahead. What I'm looking for down here is to see, oh, it's dark. Um, but you can see this home has the water heater here. It's, it's electric. Um, and then what you want to look for is the date that it was installed. Um, this one was installed in 2011. That's past its normal service life, but it's in good shape. You flush it, check the, um, you can check the, um, the sacrificial rod if you want to. Most people don't mess with those, but um, that's, that's something that you can look for. Um, now, the other thing you want to look for is evidence of rodent activity. So you can see here, this house um, does not have, let's try to crank it up here. You can see there's no flooring insulation. Um, and if you could see, um, there's no flooring insulation and also you see the piping behind me, it's, it's, it's metal, it's galvanized. This is old galvanized piping. Galvanized piping is uh, how they used to plumb houses. Uh, it's good, it's dirty, but it will eventually rust, uh, leak and cause a problem. So a situation like this, you wanna take a look at the plumbing. Has the plumbing been updated? Is it PEX, is it copper, is it old galvanized plumbing? What's the situation, okay? The other thing you wanna look for while you're down here is look at the electrical. This is a 1940s house. Could have knob and tube. Knob and tube is an old style where they used insulators and they wrap wire around it and run it through the house. It's not how we do it anymore. It's not the most efficient, safe way to do it. So if you have an old electrical system, that's another expense that you're gonna have that you will probably want to invest in, um, which could get really expensive. The plumbing, small place like this, replace the old old uh, drain lines, um, probably five to ten thousand dollars. With the um, sewer that runs out to the street, you want to have that inspected um, and see how that looks. They do a sewer scope. They run a little camera down there, and it goes through, and then they give you a video report. You take a look at that. You look for breaks. You look for roots. You look for blockages. Things like that. If it looks good, leave it alone. Um, so there, um, 
is so you see, you can't really see in this video because it's dark down here, but there is a mix. Some of the plumbing has been updated and some of it is old galvanized. So that's something to consider uh, for sure. Okay, so that's kind of, you know, your crawl space type situation. See how it looks underneath the house. Okay, so let's go inside. So some more things to look for um, in the inside is the obvious cosmetic things like flooring. Um, this has old vinyl floor. Uh, that's obviously something that's gonna wanna be, you're gonna wanna replace. That's pretty easy to do though. You can do that yourself um, or you can contract it out. Here in Seattle, um, doing flooring probably costs you anywhere between, if you're doing it yourself, you can get materials for about $3 a square foot throughout the house. If you're paying someone to do it, you're probably gonna be closer to five, six, seven dollars a square foot, depending on what materials you choose. Um, so again, back to the kitchen cabinets, although these are beautiful cabinets with look, reminds me of like old Gibson guitars. Um, they're quite overbearing. If you look at it, it doesn't leave much room for uh, counter space. Uh, so you can see it really doesn't leave much room for counter space here. So these will probably come out. These will probably come out the sinks over there. Um, it's kind of a funky layout stove right here. So my, my thought is this wall will probably come out, open this up, put an island, move um, the sink and the stove to a different spot, remove these upper cabinets, probably do like floating shelves or something um, to give it some more room and some more space so that it feels more open and less cramped. These older houses all have these small compartmentalized rooms. Okay, another thing, fixtures, okay? These old, these old lighting fixtures are gonna, you know, you're gonna wanna replace those. That's fairly inexpensive, no big deal. Um, this house, they added this little room on. They added a wall over there, so they had a little laundry room. So you can see that there's washer dryer right there. Okay, that's a little added feature. Um, so got some decisions to make. Now back to the plumbing issue. Um, so this house has the water line coming in through the wall right there. And then down here is going to be a drain line that connects under the floor back to the cellar area with that old piping. So this, a little place like this, a little two, two bedroom rambler, um, really all the plumbing is basically in this one, one wall here between the kitchen and the bathroom, which is right on the other side. So I'll show you that. Um, the bathroom is uh, a little, little, little bathroom here, you know, tub, toilet, sink, full bath, shower. Um, and you can see that the people who owned it before <laughs> did, um, did uh, put a piece of plexiglass here to, to keep the, I don't know why they did this, but it's kind of funny because it's like, reminds me of those museums where they put, um, there, there's like science centers where they put plexiglass in front of cer certain features within the building and you could take your, I used to teach for 13 years, those of you that don't know that, you could take your students there and then inside the building they have clear cutouts where you can see inside and then you can point to the kids like, ah, here's plumbing, here's wiring, here's like, you know, what all these materials are and stuff like that, which kids don't know. You know, well, heck, a lot of people don't know. Um, so this place in particular, um, bathroom, you're gonna to wanna to check for moisture, have your inspector look for moisture readings. They know to do that anyways. But basically, uh, like with this place in particular, um, the floor, it's a little, it's a little squishy. So that tells me that the tub and the toilet have been leaking over the years. And um, therefore, this all needs pulled out. So tub will come out, toilet will come out. We'll pull up all the, um, it's got, it's got old uh, linoleum Floor, vinyl flooring here, like linoleum, uh, that'll come out, and then there's probably rotten sub sub flooring, so that'll be some some plywood. Um, that'll be some plywood that needs to be cut out. Okay, now this house, in particular, you as we're looking at flooring, if you you saw there was carpet throughout. Now this house has old hardwood floorings, and the hardwood flooring is in both of the bedrooms and throughout the house itself. So this carpet here, this that runs down the hallway and then into here and into the living room, this all has hardwood floor underneath it, okay? Kitchen doesn't. Kitchen is just vinyl, uh, linoleum. 
So the idea is like, well, you know, do you want to salvage the hardwood floor? You want to sand it down, finish it, do all that? Uh, you can. Uh, that's an option. Um, but it depends on what you're trying to do. You spend all that time and, and effort doing that. Like, I hate to say it, but with this one, we'll pro probably just spray it all down with um, with a, with an oil-based paint, like a Kills, that'll just seal it all up because it's an old house. It's It's got old house smells and all that kind of stuff. So probably just spray the whole thing, sealing the floor, um, and then put new um, modern uh, scratch resistant, mildew resistant, water resistant, uh, luxury vinyl planking. Uh, that, that'd probably be the best option. Okay, another thing to look for, popcorn ceilings. Some of these have asbestos. This one, given that this is a 1940s house, probably has asbestos. That's something that you need to consider when you're, when you're doing a house like this, um, is whether or not you're okay with that or you want to have that remediated. Having it remediated can be pretty expensive. Now what they do is they come out, they spray it all down with water, and then they scrape it off into, onto tarps, and then they, they send it off. Uh, they wear proper protect, PPE, protective gear. Um, so you, they, the asbestos is only an issue if it's airborne. So what a lot of people do is they just paint it. Put a nice thick coat of paint on it, keep it under there, don't disturb it, don't mess with it. Um, nothing to look at, windows, are they fogged up? You can see here, see how this looks foggy? This is foggy. The reason it's foggy is because, um, let me see if I can show you, the seals are bad and moisture has gotten in there. When they make windows, they have two or three panes and then they fill the inside with an inert gas. If you think back to your chemistry classes, um, an inert gas is one that doesn't react. Right? So when those seals go bad, you get ox the atmosphere in there, which is mostly inert, mostly nitrogen, but there's also oxygen, carbon dioxide, and all these other different things that get in there. Moisture, H2O, right? Once that gets in there, it, it, um, when you get moisture on there, it, it, the, the water inevitably has impurities in it. And the moisture will get in there and then it will dry. And when it dries, it leaves behind the, uh, any impurities that were in the water themselves. And that's how you get the fogging. So that's another thing to look at is windows. Um, also, you need to think about like too, like are you going to be renting this out or is this your forever home? If you're gonna be renting it out, then you wanna make sure your budget is such that you're not blowing the, the budget um, and making, putting, you got a couple things to consider. You got the purchase price and then the after repair value. So there's the purchase price and the after repair value. If you take the purchase price and you add your repairs on, so let's say you buy the place for 400,000 and your repairs cost you 80. And then it's worth, the after repair value is 530. Well, boom, 400 plus 80 is 480, it's worth 530. You've got $50,000 in equity for all your time and trouble and effort for doing all that. If your repairs go over that, well, you could have just bought something that was already fixed up, right? So, um, yeah, so back to the windows. A lot of these are, Got a little bit of fogging down at the bottom, means the seals are bad, which means these are gonna need to be replaced at some point. Um, again, going back to the idea of if it's a rental, you also need to make sure that your bedrooms have, are, the windows are proper uh, size for egress. People are larger now than they used to be and the codes are, are different. So um, there's, if you're gonna rent it out and have people living in here, you need to make sure that they can get out these windows. It's not just the casement and the size, it's also the way the windows open. They need to be able to open in a way that if there is a fire out there and the only way out is the window that they can get out. That's a really big deal. Um, how do you like these deer antlers? <laughs> oh, and probably should do a video on this. There's a safe. Come on, come on, look at that. What's in the safe? Should we do a video of just cracking the safe and see what's in there? I'm kind of down for that. Um, we can't do it right at the moment, but anyways, so yeah, those are the big things to look for. You want to look at your, your crawl space, your roof, and now is water going to get in? How long is this roof going to last? Uh, one more thing, heating system. This home is all electric, so there's baseboard heating. Uh, that's easy to work with. It's, it's just then a matter of if you're going to move any walls or anything, are, is the heating in places that will bother you? Um, if so, you can just do the wall heaters. You can get rid of the baseboard heater, put the wall heaters in. In Seattle here anyways, it doesn't get very cold in the winter um, and we barely ever need air conditioning in the summer. So um, 
you can remove those and just put in scout wall heaters if, if that's what you uh, want to do. So yeah, those are the main things. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few, but um, roof, foundation, siding, windows, electrical, plumbing, flooring. <laughs> it's actually a lot, uh, but it's fun. And, and in this day and age with housing being as expensive as it is, this is a really good way where where folks, you know, blue collar folks um, or low income folks, we can take take advantage of these down payment programs and get into places and with a little sweat equity and some YouTube research uh, and, and some guidance with a, with a good agent that you trust and know um, and an inspector to kind of point you in the right direction. You can get, you can do it, you can do it. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this, hope this was helpful. If it was, you know, you know, hit the like button, subscribe for more and, uh, and I'll, I'll see you later, bye.